let us start a new topic, international trade and economic development. And all of us know there are more than 200 countries in the world, and these countries could be divided into different parts, high income countries, which are rich, middle income countries, and then low income countries. And low income countries can be considered poor or not as developed. Now, these poor or low income countries would like to raise the standard of living of their people or increase average income per person or what we refer to as economic development. Now, now when we have the world divided like this in terms of income, we know the world will not be a level playing field for different participants. And in this real world situation, what is the role of international trade, particularly as it relates to economic development of poor countries? And this is what we examine in this and subsequent lecture video. To understand the link between international trade and economic development, let us see how the world emerged in the 20th century. If you look at the initial part of the 20th century, say starting from early part of 20th century to about the onset of World War II in 1939, the world could be divided into two parts, one independent nations and two colonies of European nations. Now, as far as independent nations go, these could be further subclassified based on the ideology that they were pursuing. One were a set of countries which are based on market economies, and these countries were like US, UK, and so on. And then in 1917, the former Soviet Union became a socialist or a communist country. So this was the picture, say, leading up to World War II. At the end of World War II, the world could be divided into three parts, one being the Western industrialized na nations like the US, UK, and so on. Then we had a set of countries which followed the socialist or the communist principles, and they were a group of Soviet nations like Soviet Union, East Germany, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and so on, and also China. And the third group was essentially the former colonies of European nations. They were, became independent nations. And when they became independent nations, these countries were extremely poor. And since they wanted to develop, they were called developing countries. Now, <clears throat> these developing countries, around the time they became independent, there were a very large number of them and spread over the continents of Africa, Asia, and other continents. And so most of the world population resided in these developing countries. And the key characteristics of these developing countries around the time they became independent are as follows. Number one, these countries were extremely poor based on their average income per person, which was extremely low. These countries had dominance or preponderance of agriculture and mining, uh, or in, and they, what they didn't have is an industrial base. Either it was too small or just did not exist. If you look at other indicators, such as the ones relating to health, education, infrastructure, etc., they were at the lowest level. So if you look at the living facilities, they were really very basic. And these countries exported agriculture or natural-based products and imported machine-based consumer products. So these are the key characteristics of developing countries, or this is how they looked like at the time they became independent. As one would expect, the main goal of these developing countries was to lift the standard of living of their population. And this they wanted to achieve 
rather quickly. Now, if you want standard of living to go up, what you require is, number one, all resources must be employed. And number two, if you want average income per person to increase, there must be increases in productivity because it's just productivity which can lead to higher and higher income. And around that time, economists agreed that industrialization is the key to economic development or uplifting the masses or lifting the standard of living of people living in these countries. Now, industrialization can be used to produce consumer items and also produce machines like tractors, harvesters, and so on to increase farm productivity, help build infrastructure, which again is very important, and these countries lack, like build paved roads, railways, airports, electricity generation, water supply, particularly for irrigation and so on. And thus, if industrialization took place in these countries, they knew that productivity would increase and so would the average income per person. Now for industrialization to take place, because these countries had no industrial base, they had to import machinery from other countries. They could be either Western industrialized nations or could be the, the socialist countries like the Soviet Union and so on. Now to industrialize, they could follow one of the two models. One is the free market system as it existed in the US and Western Europe. Or another possibility was to look at the examples of the socialist countries where economic development was directed by the government in Soviet Union and so on. One thing to note about these two alternatives to choose from, free market versus government directed economic development, is the following. For the US and Western Europe to become significant economic power, say, what they were at the conclusion of World War II. It took them about two centuries to become what they became. And if you look at the Soviet Union, they started their experiment in 1917. And by the end of World War II, Soviet Union had become a super power, economically industrialized country. So, so the key thing here is industrialization was accepted as the key to economic development and these developing countries had two models to choose from. We know that developing countries could increase standard of living of its people by industrialization which would increase productivity and this would lead to an increase in average income per person. Now what would be a role of foreign trade in economic development of these poor countries? And generally speaking, the dominant view was that free foreign trade may be harmful or hurtful to the interest of developing countries. So let us look at the reasons as to why people believe this. Number one, we know that theory of comparative advantage, whether it is by Ricardo or by Heckscher Olin, what it states is each country should produce and export the product in which it has comparative advantage and import the product in which it has comparative disadvantage. Based on what we know about the condition of developing countries and also the theory of comparative advantage, we know that this theory would recommend that developing countries should export food and raw materials and import machines or machine-based products. Now, so this is what the theory of comparative advantage will tell us. And according to theory of comparative advantage, the world becomes better off. But what we realize is this may not help the objectives of developing countries. Why? Because to increase standard of living of their people, 
they want to industrialize. So there are three problems with the application of theory of comparative advantage. What are these three problems? Number one, how will these countries industrialize? Because they know that industrialization is the key to economic development. Number two, when you are exporting food and raw materials, we should remember that demand for these products may not increase much. Why? Because these goods are considered for most part to be necessities and the demand for necessities does not go up by a whole lot when incomes increase. So if you are looking at medium to long term phenomena, the demand for these products out of developing countries may not increase by much. Then the third argument against this is based on a hypothesis put forth by an economist by the name of Raoul Prebesh. And what he found through his research is developing countries face a secular decline in terms of trade. Now terms of trade simply is a ratio of price of exports divided by price of imports. And what he found through his empirical work is that price of these products, export products like food and raw material, may not increase as fast as the price of imports of manufacturers. So if you are looking at ways to increase export earnings of developing countries, chances are they may not increase or if they increase, they'll not increase by as much. And at the same time, in these developing countries, there's a huge demand for imports of machines and so on. So this belief or using theory of comparative advantage to the needs and objectives of developing countries would have been inappropriate according to the set of thinkers. Number two, if for some reason these developing countries are able to establish industries and when they initially establish industries, these industries could be called infants or not as mature as industries in Western industrialized countries. And the reason for this is as follows. The longer you stay in the market and produce goods, you become more and more efficient. And part of the reason for this is through economies of scale. And so if a mature firm is competing against a firm which is just a baby or an infant, the infant cannot stand against the efficient production of a more mature industry. So, so if we have free foreign trade, chances are these infant industries will be wiped out by foreign competition. In fact, this is an argument which was advocated initially by Alexander Hamilton in the 18th century and then refined by Frederick List in 1841 or middle of the 19th century. So when you are trying to industrialize initially, you need protection from foreign competition or we cannot have free foreign trade. Lastly, these developing countries became colonies because of foreign investments and so on. So these countries were very afraid of anything foreign, including foreign trade, foreign investments, and even foreign help through foreign trade. So these were the arguments which were advocated by economists. And this seemed to be the dominant feeling in terms of the role of foreign trade in aiding economic development for these set of developing countries.